Someday I'd like to have floors like these in my house. I've, I've been reluctant to do any flooring at all in the house because I know it's just going to get completely trashed and... <laughs> anyway. Feet are wet. Anyway, the last Motel 6 of the trip. Everything's soaked. And it's not drying. I'm going to end up putting on wet clothes. I didn't bring any spare clothes on this, this segment at all. Yeah. Anyway, okay, so it's Thursday, I think it's the 18th, something like that. <sighs> oh, uh, maybe I'll just do this for a while. <laughs> Last night I did 94 miles, I think. And I got about another 85 or 90 to go today. So, um, mostly flat. Oh, and the battery's going dead. Hang on. Try that again. Anyway, so I got the battery plugged in now, so it should be good. So, yeah, I did 94 miles yesterday, or 96, one or the other on basically a double battery with no solar, which for the most part, I was really glad I didn't do solar because it wouldn't have worked very good. Um, very, very little sunshine yesterday. I rode through the rain for a while. Uh, it wasn't raining continuously though, so there was a few times I took my jacket off. I don't have a rain jacket. I do have rain pants and I decided not to wear them because it was fairly warm and I'm like well if I had the rain gear on it would you, you get too warm and it just clings to you so I thought well if it's not if I don't get cold I'm not going to put them on if it, if it would have got really miserable then I would have put the rain pants on the jacket I got I'm not even sure how to describe it. It's a super lightweight, not very waterproof, but the water doesn't soak through it very fast. But it, it's kind of warm, and it, it blocks the wind really nice. It's one of those random things I picked up at Walmart one time. And I don't wear it very often, but it's, it's a nice, lightweight, not too bad jacket. And it's flexible. It's not all bulky and everything. Anyway. So... The recap for the last couple days for anybody who didn't catch it. Um, the bike, I had a part break that was what connected the trailer basically to the rear axle. And I was thinking about my options and like I just threw up smoke signals and had a bunch of people send me some money, so thank you very much. Uh, I was able to rig the bike up to ride just the bike without pulling the trailer and I rode that for 112 miles or something ridiculous like that um got I was I was out I was I was like north of Alamogordo so I got down into Alamogordo I got a Motel 6 rented a what was supposed to be a compact car so I figured that would be the cheapest thing I could find and my plan was to Go, go out, get the trailer, come back. And there was a bike shop in Alamogordo that I was able to buy the part that I needed from. But what I realized was when I had the car, what, well, when I got the car, first of all, they free upgraded me to a slightly bigger, medium-sized small car. They didn't give me a specific car yet. Uh, that was on the internet. And then when I got to the place, I got there early and uh, the guy's like, well, we got this truck. Do you want that? I'm like, oh, okay. And so he's like, yeah, free upgrade. So they give me a full-size Ram pickup, uh, four doors with a, not a full-length bed, but um, the bike couldn't quite park in it if I just went lengthwise without turning the wheels kind of thing. So I think it's more than a four-foot bed, but I don't think it was a six-foot bed kind of thing. Okay, anyway. Nice truck, you know. So I'm like, okay, sure, you know, free upgrade. That worked out so good. I really should have rented that in the first place. But by doing it the way I did, then I got it for less money. So yay for that. Plus I got a military discount on it. So um, the truck, 
all in 112 dollars i think so less than i was expecting but i also had started off thinking i wanted to rent it for a few days i ended up getting it all done in 24 hours so yeah that was that was a rough day so i ended up okay get the truck right or drive 120 miles out of alamogordo north pick up the trailer the trailer was all there everything was fine uh nobody had messed with it i broke it down to make it easier to haul and i unloaded everything and i swear the trailer and the bike in the back of the truck there wasn't much room left over and then all of the gear in the back seats and some of it even in, into the front seat of the pickup in the in the cab it was i mean it wasn't stacked but it was everything was covered i was like man there's a lot of stuff in here you know so once i got it all loaded up then i went all the way through alamogordo and then another about 60 miles i think to el paso and then another 100 miles out to the ranch right and it was raining like crazy out at the ranch so then all of a sudden i'm like okay so i had um i had thought about rigging a single solar panel off of the back of the bicycle without the trailer just hang the panel on the bike uh, one of the guys in the sun trip did that and it looked like it would work good enough at least for a, for a, a short you know one or two day ride and then I, I really wanted to do that to test the idea um, it would be much better than pulling the trailer was my thought if I could keep everything from wobbling too much okay but after riding through all the rain coming out to the ranch I was really worried about the road the truck was full size but not four-wheel drive didn't have really good off-road tires just a rental truck helicopter flying over and I was and there's parts of the road that are already starting to wash um, water was running across everywhere and that road just gets really messed up uh, there was a few times when I worked for the Postal Service that I missed a day of work because I couldn't get off the road you know between the motorcycle or the truck either one of them were just no you know maybe you could get out but you couldn't get back in kind of thing so I just waited and skipped the day kind of thing so now I'm looking at okay my rental truck if I get out there and get stuck one roadside assistance won't come out there and get me because we've gone through that before um, and then what's the other one it's like well now I'm paying for a daily rent on a truck at 100 bucks a day you know and it probably cost me 500 bucks to get a tow if I can get a track a tow truck out there to pull me out right so then I'm really worried so I was like okay the whole idea of going out to the ranch with the truck was to take all of the extra stuff I didn't need since I needed the truck to go get the trailer anyway and I you know or you know I could have taken the part that I bought rode all the way back out of town to get the trailer and then ride all the way back in again right that was kind of the point and then so I'm like well if I got the truck to go you know anyway this would just speed everything up so I was able to then take all of the extra stuff I didn't need anymore and drop it at the ranch okay so that that worked out really good it seems really convoluted but this way I still got to ride the last few days and it was a really good simple test of comparing trailer versus no trailer and too much stuff versus not enough stuff you know I'm I'm still kind of well I've got everything I need now to get the last hundred miles basically but it's 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 actually working out okay I, I come up with some you know, I kind of quick bungeed and um, like the the full-size tire pump I got it hanging on the handlebars now which actually is not a terrible solution I didn't um, I didn't do it last time and I think I should have you know just looking at it I'm like yeah that, that could work so if I make a little bracket for it that would hold it there that's kind of the problem right now is I don't have easy access to my bag that's on the handlebars which I use a lot so but if I had a bracket that would actually attach it up there I think I am going to explore that idea I like the idea of having the pump with me um, it's just very you know I hate those little tire pumps that you have on bicycles it's just too slow and you can't get enough air pressure in you know it's, it's just really a struggle 
so this is better so I'm gonna come back to that um, anyway so I get out to the ranch and I had planned on putting the solar panel on and I got really nervous I was my guts are all tied up because I've gone through this so many times you know it's very likely that I could have got stuck out there if I if I'd waited too long you know and it was coming down pretty good so it was getting worse so yeah anyway so decided not to mess around with doing anything on the trailer so I just kept the bike in the truck got everything else out of the truck just threw it in the house uh, took a quick look around everything seems okay out there that was my other concern is okay I'm gone for six months I'm gonna have people you know living in the house when I come back or the door will be kicked open and you know whatever right seemed like it was okay it's really dirty in there so you know just normal dust and spider webs for six months kind of thing so and I didn't super clean it before I left because whatever you know Anyway, it just it felt weird to walk into it and then turn right around and walk out again. You know, I was like, ugh. After the ranch, because I'm like, oh, I had thought about staying there that night and coming out, you know, getting up early in the morning, and then I was so worried about it raining, I thought, let me get past the gravel road. After that, it's fine. So I ended up ride, driving almost all the way back to El Paso. There's a rest area by Fabens, if anybody knows where that is. Uh, so I ended up pulling off in there and got a couple hours sleep in the truck but I I was counting hours I'm like okay looking at drive time what time does the rental place open um, and one of the thoughts was when I rented the truck it was originally from noon to noon and I realized I could get it sooner so I did that and then I was going to try to get it back within 24 hours but the guy says well you can you know keep it until noon anyway he was going to just give me a couple hours partially because I think he was feeling bad for giving me the truck because it was going to get less mileage, which it did, but whatever. Gas is now, uh, New Mexico gas was three, 310 a gallon or something like that. And then in Fabens, I bought some more gas and it was like 325 a gallon, but it's, it's not like six like it was for a while there, so it's getting better. I haven't really watched the price of gas the last six months. You know, I'd see it and I'd laugh, you know, because I didn't need it. Anyway, so um, got a couple hours sleep in the truck, not very comfortable. I could have at least crawled in the back seat because by then it was empty, but I was just so tired by that point. I was just a zombie, so um, get the truck. Okay, so I get back to Alamogordo, decide, okay, let me go hit the IHOP and get some breakfast. That'll help. It did, um, and then somewhere in there I realized that the back tire on the bicycle was flat, so I hit another Walmart and bought six spare tubes, just in case, and I do have my patch kit with me, but I didn't want to be sitting there in the rain trying to patch a tire. I've, I've not patched any tires on the road, I just swap a new tube in. And then in camp, when I have time, then I'll patch it. That's kind of how I've been doing it. So anyway, so I get to, it's yeah, in the IHOP. Um, after I ate breakfast, I just sat there in the parking lot and put the new tube on the bike and put the tire back on and tried to get it. So I was kind of ready. So when I got to the rental place, I could just jump out and grab the bike and un, you know load everything on it real quick. So that mostly worked. Um, and what else? Oh, uh, the other one was I bought some little lights for the bike because I had actually been thinking, you know, it, it would it would totally it would totally suck. But I knew that there wasn't very many hills. And I thought, well, could I possibly ride from Alamogordo all the way to the ranch in one shot to ride through the night? I've done that once before. It's rough, but then you get home sooner, and it's like not like I was in a hurry. But I thought, well, it would be nice to not have to get a motel, right? What I hadn't really considered was how completely exhausted I was by that time. So when I got on the bike, I'm already tired. I had drove over 500 miles in that rental truck. I didn't think to look at the miles when I got out, but because it was 120 
out of town to get the trailer and then 120 back in. So that's 240 already. And then about 60 to El Paso and 100 out to the ranch. And then 100 back to El Paso and then another 60. Yeah, so five, you know, not not 600 miles, I don't think. I'm not even going to do the math. But it was a good drive, you know, in 24 hours. Plus all the other stuff. And also, yeah, time I got there, yeah, I, I wasn't pedaling, but I was getting really sore sitting in the in the seat. You know, it was comfortable, but I was just, I didn't hard to get out. I just drove, right? And I... I really realized I didn't have as much time as I thought I was going to. I thought, oh yeah, I'll get home and I'll do some, I'll build a new rack to put the solar panel on. And then when I saw the rain, I didn't want to do it. But I'm really glad I didn't bother because I wouldn't have had that much time anyway. So it would have been just, you know, really, really a hack job. And then you're like, okay, let's ride 200 miles with that. Anyway, but the, the the real deciding factor, aside from the fact that the the road and the rain was going to be a problem, I thought, um, I was like, I had that in my head. Um, it just was like, there was no benefit to having the solar panel because it was going to be raining the whole two days anyway. And I really wouldn't have gotten very much off of the solar yesterday and I, it looks like probably about the same today so I'm like all right so by you know so by about shoot three o'clock yesterday afternoon I'm already just wiped out I'm like I was oh the other thing I was really trying not to use the battery on the ride as much as possible because I was trying to stretch it out for like two days and it wasn't much for hills but I was not going very fast because I was so tired so then I'm like, okay, let me change the game again and go ahead and pull out the phone, boop, 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 get a motel. So I got another Motel 6. This is on the east side of El Paso, pretty, really close to the Loop Road, if you know the area. So on the east end of town, so basically the furthest out I could go. Um, I just have been kind of locked into Motel 6s on this trip because they've all let me bring the bicycle in, and a lot of places won't. You know, or that I've ran into, so I'm like, okay, yeah, they always let me bring it in, so I don't know if that's an official policy, but so far, so good, so something to look at if you're bike traveling, because uh, you don't want to leave your bike outside, plus with the electric bike, I'd want to charge it, so I could disconnect the battery and bring it in, would be an option, but I thought, okay, bring the bike and get it fully charged, and then I've got about 90 miles from here to home because I'm on the edge of town, so it's less than 100 even. And the first 70 miles is basically a really long, gentle downhill. You can't coast, but it'll be a real easy pedaling as long as I can get going before the wind starts blowing. Because, you know, it's... it Typically on that road, the wind blows... It's either a headwind or a tailwind, depending on the day. It goes back and forth, and I forget... I'd probably be a headwind, but at least it's downhill, so that'll even it out. And at least I got a few hours sleep last night, so I'm not as exhausted as I was. So, yeah. Oh, and by the time I got the truck dropped off, um, it was like 11 o'clock. I thought I was going to really, I really wanted to hit the guy at at 8 o'clock when he opened, but by the time I messed around with the bike and a few other things and, um, two Walmarts to get everything I needed and you know so it was like 11 o'clock so that slowed me down a lot so yeah it was I think I was it was almost dark no it was well it was so cloudy it was hard to tell I think I got into the outskirts of El Paso coming in from Alamogorda 5 o'clock and it was about 9 o'clock by the time I got to the motel Right, which going through towns is always slow. El Paso is big, and I was taking more bike-friendly routes, so um, you know I didn't want to be on the freeway. Although one of the some sections of the Loop Road did have a marked bike trail on them, on the shoulder, you know. So I was like, well, it's possible, but then you're dealing with off ramps and on ramps, which is really scary. So I was trying not to do that, so, 
Yeah. Ended up more or less following 54 all the way down to Interstate 10. And then coming across, I kind of bounced around on the north side of 10 coming through. Um, wasn't too bad. The, the, the issue was with the amount of rain that we had, there was huge sections of standing water all over the road. Um, and in the dark, it was getting harder to see. There was a lot of the streets I was on that didn't have street lights. And the little lights that I bought really weren't very bright. And I hadn't charged them yet, so I didn't know how long they'd last. So I was running one on flicker just so people could see me. And the other one I turned on to on and it quit working halfway here you know, halfway through town. So I was like running through dark streets with standing water that you couldn't see. Yeah, it was... <laughs> if you ride along, all of a sudden you'd just be getting a huge spray and you had no idea the water was there. Yeah, that was kind of sketchy. So I was pretty happy to get here, but... And then I'm just, you know, exhausted. It wasn't until later that I realized, yeah, I'd gone almost 100 miles last yesterday. So, yeah. Um... It would have been about, about a, like 96 miles or 94 in about 14 hours. So I wasn't really going fast. If I would have gone faster, I would have gotten here sooner. I mean, that makes sense. But then it was like, well, since I didn't have solar on the bike, I couldn't push it too fast because I'd run out of battery. And then, you know, the last 10 miles, you really want to have some battery because you're tired, right? So I, I didn't have much when I got in here, but now it's fully charged again and I got less miles and it's basically literally from El Paso to uh, Fort Hancock. It's about 70 miles and it's all downhill. It's not steep, but it's just a completely gradual, you know, not enough to where you could coast, but it's, you know, at least you're not going uphill. And then the last 30 miles, you got to go back up a hill, but it's, it's not a really long hill. Well, you go up and then back down the other side again. But it is a steep hill. The trucks slow right down on that hill, but okay, whatever. So if I can save my battery for that, I'll just fly up and it'll be fine. So it should be should be okay. Yeah, so one way or another, we get home tonight. Oh, and then the last 12 miles, um, well, actually, it's the last six miles is gravel. And that is just tore up, so I'm just going to have to go slow on that. So, yeah, that's my day so far. So, it's about 8 o'clock now, I think. I should get going before I waste too much time. You know, the funny thing, when I was riding last night, I, I, I was like, well, I don't have to worry about the sun, you know, because I didn't have any solar, you know. It just was a, kind of a funny way to look at it is like, well, um... If it's cloudy or if it's sunny, I don't care. After dark, I can still ride. That was the other thing is when I was with solar, I would try to stop a couple hours before sunset so I would have enough time for the bike to charge. If that wasn't even an option, I, I could keep riding into the dark, you know, because it's still a bike. And without the trailer, I actually could ride it pretty easily. And... Uh, um, I changed one of my power settings. I got a 60 watt setting now. So if I just hit the throttle, full throttle, it only goes up to 60 watts. And for a lot of the rides, 60 watts was enough that I could pedal a nice cadence. I was going about 12, 13, 14 miles an hour at 60 watts, right? And you couldn't do that with 150 watts pulling the trailer. So this was, you know, this is a huge difference. So yay for that. So yeah, 60 watts on a double battery, you can go for a long ways that way. So yeah, kind of confirmation of what everybody knows already, but it was neat to actually see it. And you know, I was cruising along, I was, I was making, I mean, I, I still wasn't going super fast, it didn't seem like, but there was a lot of times that I was easily going 15 miles an hour without working too hard. So it's just that I was so exhausted, I really couldn't maintain that, I'd, I'd stop twice an hour sometimes just to get off the bike and stretch a little bit and I just uh, I did not I'm at the end I'm really really at the end right now I just didn't want to keep doing it anymore so yeah good to good to be almost home I think then who knows uh, I may or may not post t 
tonight. Yeah, we'll see how it goes when I get there. Probably put something up tomorrow, and then I'll probably take a week off. Yeah, anyway. That's it for now. Bye.